So you're saying there's a chance, and clearly that's how Rider Nation and the Riders could feel. At this point, earning their first win in 11 weeks, now 1-9, in nine, but still on the hunt for the playoffs, guys. Because right now, with the crossover picture with Montreal and BC uh, fighting for that third place spot in the West, they only have four wins. Then on top of that, in the East, you have the third place team, the Ottawa Red Blacks, with five wins. The Riders play Montreal twice. They play Ottawa. They also have another game against BC. Teams that they're chasing for the playoffs. Can they do it? Gord. You know what? Somehow, I, I can't believe they could come back from this. Although, if there's any team that could, it's probably Saskatchewan. I look at the way they've played so far this year, and they've had an unfortunate set of circumstances affect them, it seems, every game. And, you know, there's been a lot of correctable mistakes, and maybe with the coaching change, um, you know, there's, there's a bit of hope and belief now. If they can stay disciplined, there's a chance. But if I'm a betting man, I say no way. <laughs> Andrew. Can I just point out how great it is being in media? That we could take one victory and turn it into a playoff conversation. So if you guys lose two, we're going to start talking it's about in May over. you're not winning the cup. It's just going to happen <laughs> that way. <sighs> Stories are made on this. And I'm going to say they'll squeak in because I just want to see it happen because we've seen it before where a coach comes in mid-season and they take a team to the playoffs and who knows from there. Things can change. You know, maybe we don't know what the coach is like in the locker room. Maybe it was a cancer thing, but who knows? That could, but I don't know, 0-9 to go to a playoffs? Well, with, with that, what, everything that's gone wrong, and we've know, talked about them enough just as much as we've talked about the flaky. And it's just been every week it's something new. And it's just been one bad thing after another and after another. And there's, they're not fixing it. It just keeps piling up. So one victory is one thing. Put two, three to get victories together. Then I'll call you a playoff team. Well, you know in the CFL, there are times when a team wins five games the regular season have gone on to the Grey Cup. It's true. So there is still a chance for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, uh, albeit uh, it would be tough to get into the, well, not just into the playoffs, but win in the playoffs. That's another story. But hey, there's some uh, good news uh, in Rider Nation for once <laughs> in the season. All right, how about this? The Toronto Blue Jays have been a story. I know, Gord, how much uh, you are a Blue Jays fan and uh, very passionate, and you're in a very, you know, when it comes to the intricacies of that team. This is a team that, you know, f from my point of view, a little pessimistic, I'm like, I'm waiting for that collapse. They had, a, remember last year, that great yep. start? They collapsed around June or late July, and I was like, all right, now sanity has come to the world. This time around, the Blue Jays look pretty good. Not only that, but they've had four great additions, two of them during the trade, that's Price and Tulowitzki. And before that, if you think about Russell Martin, even though he's a little banged up, has been an improvement at the catcher position. And then, obviously, he's got to be the front runner for the AL MVP, talking about Josh Donaldson. So you look at those pieces, the, the guys who've been to the playoffs, guys who are winners, adding to this lineup. We're now in September. This is where baseball really turns the tide where you start seeing the cream of the crop rise and you start seeing those games back they're still not out of it though you got the yankees still chasing them and there's still teams fighting for wild card spots with that said and with the blue jays and the way they played against baltimore on the friday night at least and the game yesterday against the boston red sox where they got trounced is there like maybe a cause for concern or maybe you know uh, maybe not to have that ticker tape parade just yet in <laughs> toronto and I think there's a big cause for concern. I think their starting pitching has, has all year been uh, either hit or miss. You know, it's been on a heck of a run in the second half, but you still have three starters that throw the ball under 90 miles an hour in Estrada, Dickey, and, and Burley. How's that going to play in, in dog days of September when you're facing uh, teams that are gearing up for playoffs, and especially the Yankees another seven or eight times? Uh, that's cause for concern. Uh, their offense has been outstanding. Uh, the one difference, as you've mentioned, they have added some great leadership and playoff experience. And guys like Price and Martin and Donaldson, Tulowitzki, they can go a long way towards getting that team ready and making sure that the single game blowouts to Baltimore or Boston don't continue into two or three or four game losing streaks. And that's what you have to do to make the playoffs. And so you said it's... You can't just rely on one pitcher. You can't rely on just Price. Price can't pitch every single game. You have to have the consistency over an entire series. How are you going to win four games if you can't? If you're getting blown out in two or three of them. Like you, you need that consistency. At least with the Blue Jays, they have that kind of cushion. You get like the one game they get blown out, but then they'll come back and score 10, 11, 12 runs. But so, can they rely on their offense? Where in the really? postseason, you know, it's very hard to score runs as is. Yeah. They've done it so far, and it's that's the thing. It's going to be, will this work in the postseason? No one knows because no one's seen postseason ball in Toronto in 
20 something years. So th that's going to be the challenge. If, can they, and that's why you need more pitching and why, you know, I think they didn't do enough during the trade deadline to bring a better pitching staff in. Adding price is great, but they don't have that, I guess, overall pitching, what I would like to see them have. They have one, two pieces maybe. Okay, move on to a serious case uh, involving Patrick Kane, of course, the saga now going to a grand jury. The Chicago Blackhawks still say that they're going to stick behind Kane through this, and they're not going to trade him despite having several teams make some offers for the forward. Guys, what are the odds, regardless of what the outcome happens, that Patrick Kane still remains a Chicago Blackhawk? Andrew. I want to say he doesn't, but I feel like he will because it's Patrick Kane, and that's the problem that I have with this whole thing, that Mike Richards got let go of his contract because of what he went through, because of it was a salary cap dump, we know that, but Patrick Kane is Patrick Slava Kane. Slava Voinov. Yeah, and it's, you know, all these players go through all this process, but they still stick with their team. We know what Mike Richards was. That was to get rid of salary cap. So I don't think Chicago's going to dump on Patrick Kane. If anything, they might, you know, bring him in and embrace that, you know, oh, here's the team kind of mentality. But I don't know how much longer you can keep doing that with Patrick Kane and what he's constantly getting in trouble with. Especially in such a serious case like this, Gord. Like, yeah. I understand, like, if he gets convicted by a grand jury, obviously his career is done. But if he does survive this, he does go back to the NHL, does he still stay in a Blackhawk uniform? I just don't see that because of all the backlash. I, I think it's going to be extremely difficult. I mean, we can't play judge and jury. We don't know the facts. Uh, and certainly the team should stick behind him at this stage until they know the facts. Uh, but I think this isn't a situation like Jared Stoll, um, you know, getting caught enjoying, uh, you know, off-ice activities, and he still found a spot in the NHL. This is a lot more serious. This is a, you know, a societal uh, problem, um, and this is something they can't sweep under the rug. This is a very serious incident. Um, so I, I think depending on the legalities of the case, at some point it's going to be very difficult to bring him back. And... Uh, I think you may have seen him play his last game in a Blackhawk uniform. All right, guys, we're going to take a commercial break. On return, we're going to have over under next.